Welcome back everyone. I'm going to go over the details for the upcoming competition happening on February 27, 2024, which features the lasagna meta. Lasagna is not a new item and we've done a lasagna competition before in the past. It was about eight months ago, but this time the craft requirements for lasagna have changed to make them a little bit more difficult to craft. I am going to go over the changes that were made to the lasagna craft and go over the competition details. And then I have a build showcase prepared to give you an idea on how to make a very competitive design without requiring any nfts to do so as always the official details are on the common ground world announcements channel and the gala games discord and you can find an invite link to the gala games discord in the description of the video so the event starts february 27 2024 and it ends three days later on march the 1st 2024 meta is to sell lasagna standard trade time is 120 seconds with a one gasoline cost per trade that trade Trade time is high. You might have to run multiple trade vehicles at the same time. Biome is forest facing the north and the edges are a forest on the north side, rivers on the east and west sides, and an ocean on the south side. The rewards are the standard gallo rewards for placing in the top 1200 in the leaderboard. And cash boosts for this competition are going to be jam and white rice, giving you more cash than they originally do. This is what the starter biome looks like. They do start you off with three rice fields and a mixing tent and energy production. So you could go ahead and start making white rice but it is hard to scale up white rice production because the mixing tents are very expensive and you also need a lumber production set up in order to build them so what i would recommend is removing the mixing tent because it does give you a very good amount of money at the start and using this money to start up gold rush gold rush will still be a good and viable option to get all the cash that you need and it shouldn't be too difficult to set up since they do start you off with the energy production which you need in order to actually build the forges the original craft requirement for lasagna was two cheese two pasta sauce and one eggs but the new craft requirement is three cheese two pasta sauce one eggs and three flour so they have increased the cheese requirement by one and added a three flour requirement which which means you'll need more items to make lasagna which makes it slightly more difficult the increased cheese requirement means you have to produce more milk and more rice vinegar and the flour requirement now means that you're gonna need a couple windmills in order to make flour and potentially another wheat field now white rice also had a craft requirement adjustment a couple months ago originally it needed two husk rice and one energy in order to craft white rice but now it needs four husk rice and one energy so you're going to need more husk rice than you originally did before so expect to have more rice fields the new nft that got introduced with this competition is called the nana's treacheria it is an epic nft provides up to two passive tomatoes and a 30 percent craft time reduction to all of the crafts in the sauce facility that are directly adjacent to the building doesn't require a road it doesn't have any wages and it casts no negative proximity effects there are 300 in supply in the gala game store and they're going for 350 dollars each if you are interested in getting this you can use the link in the description of the video as it will help support me and the channel as for my thoughts and opinions on this nft i don't believe the utility justifies the price that they're trying to sell this for there are other nfts that i would recommend that provide far more utility than this for example a wheat stand a fancy milk barn or a nourish milk barn would be a great alternative the nourish milk barns are actually still available in the gala game store i believe they're 250 dollars each and those give you three passive feed and three passive water to all of the milk barns adjacent to it as well as the nourish milk barn itself i can tell you that that's going to give you so much more utility than this nft right here just to talk more about the utility on this tomato stand nft the passive tomato effect really isn't that helpful because tomato farms only take 30 seconds to craft tomatoes they only have a three water requirement which isn't that bad and best of all the tomato 
tomato farms aren't even negatively impacted by shade so it gives you more versatility on where you can have them placed in your build and the next thing is the tomatoes in this case are used to craft tomato paste and that requires three tomatoes the tomato stand only gives you up to two passive tomatoes so even if you were to have one you would still need to make a tomato farm and have crackers pick up the tomatoes so you can get the rest of the tomatoes to build the tomato paste you can see it's really not going to save you that much space now if you have two of those tomato stands i suppose you can have full passive tomatoes and then you would save a couple spaces but it's really expensive to get two of those stands you're better off honestly getting three nourish buns if you wanted to even spend that kind of money and the 30 percent craft time reduction to the sauce facilities it's okay i can save you a space or two in this design but it's still not worth it because sauce facilities only cast one shade and you can have them set up in a way where you can have them close to your crops or to your green timer windmills and not you know not cast shade on them since they only cast one shade so you can get by with a more versatile build if you were to accommodate with this nft to your build you would probably want to have your sauce facilities right next to this nft which means you wouldn't be able to pull off having the buildings in separate places where they're more convenient to have if that makes sense just overall this nft is not worth it you're better off getting almost anything else honestly and now the moment you've been waiting for the lasagna build showcase so i created this build and i believe it does a very competitive rate for lasagna without requiring any nfts in fact i thought it was so good that i was tempted to just abandon the town and not even share it because i was afraid that i was giving you guys too good of a build ah but screw it i'm just gonna go ahead and share it so the production rate for lasagna is 41.4 per hour so at least 41 per hour i think it peaks at 41.5 per hour based on the tomato paste that it is making so i am gonna scroll through the production monitor and i am going to talk about the production a bit starting with what is required for lasagna here so cheese is at 127 per hour that would be enough for 42 lasagna per hour eggs are at 47 per hour the eggs really aren't an issue they're very easy to make for the lasagna so definitely have enough eggs for that flour is at 130 per hour so that is enough flour to do 43 lasagna per hour since it's three flour per lasagna and pasta sauce is at 83 so that's enough pasta sauce to do 41.5 lasagna per hour so that is the bottleneck in this case and just to take a further look at pasta sauce that requires tomato paste three salt and one sugar sugar is not an issue at all i know it's overproducing sugar as for tomato paste that is almost 84 per hour you can see i have some excess tomato paste so it's making enough tomato paste to get close to 42 lasagna per hour you know 84 pasta sauce 42 lasagna per hour so the main bottleneck here i believe is the salt making 249 salt per hour you need six salt per lasagna if you do the math it's enough salt for 41.5 lasagna per hour so with all of that said i believe salt is the bottleneck so if you were just to add another salt field or maybe another tractor or maybe both you could improve the salt production rates and possibly take this build's production rates even higher i think this build is well balanced with the exception of a couple things things like tomatoes sugar and white rice but i mean you're gonna have to overproduce some of the items in order to make all of the items that you need to make the lasagna i'm gonna start with the flour sugar and salt production there's a lot of crops involved when making lasagna so you're gonna need a lot of tractors to pick up those crops I have a total of 12 tractors spread across the town placed in specific spots where they cast to shade and aren't going to negatively impact my green timer windmills or my crops so as for the crops, I have two wheat fields, four sugarcane fields, and 12 salt fields. The salt fields are right next to the ocean. That way they have the three passive salty that they need in order to have a green craft timer so that you can craft brine quickly. All of those items are taken to the silos of which I have two of, and they're used to craft flour, sugar, and salt. But you also need wood in order to craft those items. So we're going to need loggers and we're going to need tree farms. There's a total of seven loggers in this design and there's a total of 15 tree farms.
farms. Now for flour, there are three windmills crafting flour on a green craft timer next to the ocean. And there's also one windmill crafting flour on a red craft timer. There's three windmills crafting sugar on a green craft timer right next to the river on the east. And there are three windmills crafting salt on a green craft timer right here near the livestock production. And all the other windmills are on a red craft timer also crafting salt. That's the way I have all of these windmills set up and all of the flour, sugar, and salt get stored in the storehouses of which there are four of them in this design. Moving on to rice vinegar production, it does require husk rice brought in from the rice fields. So there are a total of eight rice fields. Remember that rice fields require 10 water in order to build, but only eight water in order to craft husk rice. The husk rice is taken to the silo, picked up by the mixing tents, and I have a total of nine mixing tents, but six of them are making white rice. It requires one energy and it has that passive energy supplied by a nearby power plant. There are a total of nine sauce facilities, four of which are crafting rice vinegar. They do have a two water requirement, so it is best to have that passive water requirement fulfilled in order to make the rice vinegar. Next is cheese production, so you're going to need milk and in order to pick up the milk, you're going to need ATVs. So I have three ATVs over here. They only cast one shade so I can have them closer to the windmill without negatively impacting it with shade. I have 11 milk barns. They're all rotated in very specific ways so that the cows can easily go for a certain portion of meadows. As you can see, this is done on this side as well and on this side right here. So you do want to pay attention to the way you rotate your milk barns because it will make a difference for the milk production rate. But yeah, like I said, 11 milk barns making milk and I have a total of 41 meadows which are shared across the milk production and egg production. Like I said, nine mixing tents in total and these three are making cheese. As for sauce production, four tomato farms, they are not negatively impacted by shade. Nine sauce facilities in total, two of which are making the tomato paste closer to where the silos are. And three of them are making pasta sauce. And for lasagna production, I have two Italian restaurants crafting lasagna. The only other item I haven't mentioned is the eggs, and I have one chicken coop in order to get all of the eggs I need to make the lasagna. I have gasoline production on the north side with the two water pumps, two power plants, a refinery in between them crafting gasoline, and a refinery to the side crafting petroleum. There is no oil seep, so I have to craft crude oil with the oil pumps. There are a total of five oil pumps. Oil pumps don't cast any shade, so it's convenient to have them next to my windmills without casting any shade on them. And I do have one forklift in charge of picking up the crude oil and storing it in the fuel storage. As for doing the trades on the northeast corner, I have a trade depot and I also have a trade pier. Since the trade time is two minutes, it is convenient for me to have both of these vehicles to do my trades with just in case I need to sell two different items at the same time. For auto trade, I have most of the items at a quantity of 10 with the exception of the crops. I have those at a quantity of 12. Here's what the build looks like on the visualizer. Total cost is 15.6 million cash. Wages are 16,650 per minute. You will have no issue paying all of the wages for the build. You can find the file for the visualizer on my discord server and an invite link to my discord server is on the description of the video as usual no nfts are required in order to reach this production rate I'll mention a couple NFTs that will be a huge help to your design. Two of them I already mentioned, first one being wheat stand to give you passive wheat for your windmills crafting flour, as well as for feed mills so you can more efficiently craft feed and then you can store them at a trough and have them next to your milk barns to more efficiently craft milk. The next one being the Norish barn, which gives you three passive feed and three passive water to all of the adjacent milk barns. This can let you get by with crafting less feed but still having a very efficient milk production rate saves you space and materials basically and the Norris barn doesn't cast any shade so you can have it right next to a windmill not cast any shade to it which helps you get by with more green timer windmills I'll go ahead and mention fancy barn too it's uh, cheaper than the Norris barn it provides you with a cow that moves 
slightly faster. The craft time is exactly the same for both of these. The Fancy Barn only casts one shade instead of two shades, so it does let you get by with having it slightly closer to those green timer windmills. And another great one is the Pilgrim Turkey Statue. This only takes up a quarter space, but when placed, it doubles all the workers in your ATVs and your ranch houses. This can save you a lot of space, especially when you pair it with a Weath stand in order to craft feed because you are going to need more ATVs if you do that. There's a lot of effect cards that you could apply here that would reduce the craft time of things or increase the movement speed of the workers. There's the Gilded Barns, Great Woodlands, Gusty Winds, Hasty Windmill, Hasty Tractors, Crafty Meadows, the Gourmet Delight, Listening Mixer, Grazia Ristorante, and I suppose the Bulky Storehouse to increase your storehouse capacity as well as the Bulky Silo. I believe that's all I have to share. So I hope this gave you an idea on how to create or improve your current design. If you found this helpful or informative, please leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing if you haven't done so. Click the link at the top of the description of the video if you want to play Common Ground World and help support my channel. As always, I appreciate your support and thank you for watching.